I'm Kathy Thomas, and joining me today will be the chef at Little Sparrow in Santa Ana, Eric Semeniego. Chef is going to show us how he makes his delicious faro dish. Welcome, chef. I want to know what makes faro so delicious. Um, faro is one of my favorite things to cook. It's, it's a grain that I love to eat. It's a grain that I love to cook. Um, it's chewy, earthy. Um, it just makes me, it makes me happy. The farro dish that we're gonna do has a ton of mushrooms. Normally we just do oyster, but since we have these really great uh, king oysters, we're gonna go with these as well. Um, these, you can cook any way you want. You can grill them, you can throw them in a big saute pan, you can chop them up. They, they hold their texture really, really well, and it's one of my favorite mushrooms to cook with. And what are these? These are honshimenji. And if home cooks can't get their hands on these gorgeous mushrooms, what else could they use? Cremini mushrooms are really good. Portobello would be nice. Anything that with a lot of texture. And you want some flame on here? Yeah, right. mushrooms definitely need high flame, good bit of oil, and a lot of space. Right. And we'll start with the big ones first, just because they're gonna take a little bit longer to cook through. Uh, we're gonna add just a little bit of salt to these ones now. You don't wanna salt your mushrooms too early because they tend to leach out a little bit of their moisture. We're also gonna add in some of these I cooked earlier. These are regular oyster mushrooms mm -hmm. and they're just shredded and cooked the same exact way. And if you really wanted to get fancy, you could buy some chanterelles or mm -hmm. some black trumpets if they have them at the, at the store. And I kind of think like mushrooms in a dish like this as your meat source. Oh yeah. Because they have that umami. It's, it's the umami, it's the, the bite, the chewiness of kind of a meat. And you've already cooked off the farro. Right, you can cook it the day before, two days before, and just put it in the refrigerator. The restaurant, we cook it in leek stock, just to keep all of it very simple and vegetarian, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, we do that for all of our grains. So I always want to have, as a chef, I want to have that ability to accommodate for a guest that is vegetarian or vegan. It smells so good. It smells great, I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Just before serving, we're gonna toss in a big handful of some really, really peppery, bitter arugula. Um, it helps kind of make it more of a salad, but it, it, it also adds that peppery bitterness that you, you kind of need to cut through the richness of the mushrooms and the farro. Dandelion greens will work very well. Um, you could get some mustard greens if you want, mm -hmm. maybe mustard greens or even kale. Kale would be great mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. salad as well. So chef, five, 10 eggs? I kind of stole it from David Chang in mm -hmm. New York, Momofuku. Mm -hmm. Um, it's literally just a boiled egg for five minutes and ten seconds. It keeps the white perfectly cooked, but the yolk is liquidy and gooey and, and just runs all over the salad and it just makes everything really, really tasty. And it so, makes a sauce, doesn't yeah, it? It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's own delicious. It's sauce in, inside the egg. Mm -hmm. So once they're done, then we'll pull them out, shock them in ice water. They're a little bit more delicate than a hard boiled egg, but they peel just like a hard boiled egg. I'm going to finish the salad off with a little bit of soy and a fresh crack of pepper. And it's ready to go. Beautiful. And if you've made the eggs in advance, you can peel them and reheat them. Yeah, it's hot water for literally 10 seconds. This is a mixture of chopped parsley, finely minced parsley, and chives. And just a little bit of really good olive oil on top. That is so gorgeous. Thank you so much, Chef. It was my pleasure. Here's a quick tip for Melissa's. Duca is an irresistible topping made from nuts, seeds, and spices. Its roots are Egyptian, but it's so versatile, it can top everything from grilled fish to blanched green beans. You want to start by toasting some sesame seeds, and these are beautifully brown, and I just put them in a small skillet, and as they browned, I just tossed them with a silicone spatula. I want to take some toasted, roasted, salted nuts, and I've got cashews, pistachios. Pulse those until some of them are ground to a powder. Okay, the trick for dumping things out of a food processor, you take your middle finger and you just stick it through that little hole and you can hold the blade and keep it from falling out. In go the sesame seeds, ground cumin, ground coriander, and some salt, but the amount of salt depends on how salty the nuts were. Just stir this together. Oh, it smells so delicious. 
This can go on top of cheese. It can go on, on top of sliced tomatoes, grilled vegetables. One of my favorites is roast chicken. But today it's going to go on some lovely green beans. And these green beans have been blanched until they're tender crisp and then tossed with a little extra virgin olive oil. And on goes the dukkah. It's delicious. The fruit and vegetable aisles are filled with so much potential. Try something new. Have an adventure.